It's a beautiful day in Tyria. Look at the sky. What the? Oh, 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 oh. Ow. Howdy folks, my name is Richie, aka Bogotter, and welcome back to another Guild Wars 2 Boomerangs video. What's a Guild Wars 2 Boomerang? Well, it's somebody who's played the game in the past, took a break of varying length, and is now trying to return to the game and get back up to speed. In previous episodes, I caught players all the way up to the September 2014 feature pack. In this episode, we're going to cover all the major changes that happened in November 2014 and December 2014. So sit back, relax, keep your arms and hands inside the ride at all times, and let's get to it! Alrighty then. Back in November 2014, the second half of The Living World Season 2 commenced. You can replay any of these episodes of Season 2 by going into your story journal. You hit H, click on story journal, and if these episodes aren't unlocked, you can either have a friend open the instance for you and play through alongside them, or you can purchase the episodes from the gem store. If you never played through Living World Season 1, you can't replay them currently, though ArenaNet says they're going to try to make them playable in the future. You can, however, go to this NPC on the western side of Lion's Arch with a level 80 character and watch a video recapping the events of Living World Season 1. The carapace and luminescent armor sets are the rewards for completing the Living World story content in Season 2. The carapace pieces are the base rewards, which you can upgrade to the luminescent versions if you perform a series of challenging achievements. The luminescent armor is the perfect reward for players who want their characters to dress up like the marshmallows in a bowl of booberry cereal. Also added last November is a new zone far to the west called the Silver Wastes. Completing events in the Silver Wastes rewards you with bandit crests, which can be traded for a variety of rewards. Many players group up here regularly to tackle the events and loot lost bandit chests because it can be rather lucrative. There's also a new world boss event in the Silver Wastes called the Vine Wrath, which spawns if players work together to control the events all over the map. December 2014 saw some major changes to PvP. The team and solo arena have been merged into ranked arena, and a party of any size can queue, including solo players. Player stats from the team and solo arenas that are now defunct have been combined into Phantom. And no, you're not having a mini stroke, I didn't say anything intelligible there. What I meant to say is that player stats from team and solo arenas have been combined to create ranked arena stats, though the legacy team and solo arena stats can still be viewed in the PvP panel. PANEL! <laughs> Unranked arena matches have also been added. A party of any size can queue, including solo players, and the rewards are the same as ranked arena. The days of missing your queue pop are over because now the client will flash and play an alert sound when the PvP matches are ready. This is great for players who want to catch up on some light reading or finish some work while they're waiting in queue. No! Oh, crap! Players now get to vote for a map that they want to play on after accepting a match prompt. The list of selectable maps is randomly generated, and the final map is picked via a weighted roll. The more a map is picked by the players, the higher the chance the map is chosen. If you want to maximize the number of friends you have in unranked play, always choose Courtyard, Skyhammer, or Spirit Watch if they're available. Responding to the demands of the player base to create characters more closely resembling Harry Potter, a new customization option was added to the game called Mail Carriers. It's shown in the equipment section of the Hero Power for the Pajapkajibik Bat. And no, that was not another stroke. It's shown in the equipment section of the Hero Panel for accounts with a character level higher than 71. These cosmetic animations change the way that mail is delivered to your characters and can be bought in the gem store for those who want it. The daily achievement system has been revamped. Again. Achievements are now divided into three categories. PV, Wuv Wuv, and PV. Oh, PVE, World vs. World, and PVP. <clears throat> the number of available achievements per day is based on the highest level character on the account, up to a maximum of four achievements per category. Completing achievements now rewards players with items and or experience based on the corresponding content type. For example, completing World vs. World dailies rewards world experience. Completing daily achievements no longer rewards players with achievement points. A new daily completionist achievement has been added and is earned by completing any combination of daily achievements from three categories. Monthly achievements have been removed entirely, and existing daily and monthly achievement rewards have been rolled up into the new login reward system. 
A new login reward system is available. It's ArenaNet's way to get you to log into your accounts every single day. It has also been known to inspire you to log into your kids' accounts every day so you can steal their rewards too. I, I, I mean, uh, I would never. How dare you? The first time you log in each day, you'll receive a new item from the reward track. Progress on the login reward track will reset only after claiming the 28th and final reward. P.S. You should always choose laurels. They're precious. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There's all the major changes that occurred in November and December 2014. Stay tuned for another Guild Wars 2 Boomerang episode to help you catch up to the present day. Hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, I'd appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button before you go. Post any questions you may have in the comments field below and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when future videos are released. I also have a referral link that you can use to pre-purchase the Card of Thorns expansion for Guild Wars 2. Doing so costs you nothing extra and directly supports this channel. You can find Find the link down in the description below and I'd really appreciate it if you use it. Hope everybody has a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Take care.